Straight away about means of escape, you say that this record is across your 20-year career the album that you're most proud of. T- tell us some more about it and why you're, you're so happy with the result. I just think it it captures the band. You know, we've done a lot of touring since the last album and um, growing even more comfortable with the way each other plays. So it was cut very much in a live kind of environment in a, in a studio I hadn't been to before working with people that I hadn't worked with before. And um, I think all the songs kind of fit together in a, in a good way and, and um, it's, quite, it's quite an eclectic sort of mix of songs. Why did you um, make the decision to produce yourself this time and, and how did you find the whole experience? I, I think the reason was really is that I wanted to cut it kind of live. I, I wanted it to, be, to be sort of the, the excitement to sort of, I was going to say jump off the page, but it's not a book, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, I wanted it to have that. Um, and really, that was about who knew the band best live. And obviously that's me, because I've been at every show I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I just, that was the main decision. And then we, we had a really good studio. And then the whole the whole thing was that we decided just because it's blues, it doesn't mean that we can't use these high end guys. So we had, um, you know, we had Ian Dowling, who's who's won a Grammy for working with Adele and Eddie Spear, who just finished mixing U 2s album. So just because it's a you know like a, a blues album doesn't mean that it can't be of the highest kind of sonic quality, which is what I wanted. You know, I yeah. I wanted to bring a bit of the modern into the recording aspect of it, but but the songs to stay rooted in in the blues because it's probably my most bluesy album really. writing something like Hurting Time, do you think straight away there, oh yeah, horns would be good on this, yeah, or is definitely. it something that you come when you start to rehearse it or record it? No, no, definitely when I'm writing it, and it didn't used to be that way, but I mean, I've learned a lot playing with, with, with all these different people now, because it's, it's you know, it's been fun and, and really rewarding, and you, you learn to listen to a lot of the other instruments. I can usually hear, hear the whole thing, and um, sometimes it might throw you a curve, and, and sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. Was Hurting Time really your slide guitar debut on record? I can't quite believe that. I, yes, I think it is, yeah. Um, there might have been a couple of songs where like, there's a tiny little overdub, but actually as, as the lead, you know, as the lead instrument, yeah, simply because I, I'm not that good at it and I wanted to get better, so I, I started doing it a, a bit at home. I need to do it a whole lot more because that is about the extent of my slide playing that you can hear on that part.
Tell me a bit about Tired of Trying, because you dedicated it to Walter Trout, who I know you know really well and you're great friends with. Yeah. Um, your sound, both in your singing and playing, sort of comes from his sort of end of the blues, you know, that end he's kind of made his own. Is 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 that an area that you naturally fell into, graduated to? I think just because he was the guy that taught me and, and because he's been my sort of mentor and friend since I was 15, I think it just comes out in the music really. Um, sort of organically um, because he's been such an influence and um, you know I, uh, the whole story with that was we, we went out for dinner and we were talking he, well, then we went back and to, to the hotel and, and I went to his room to listen to his new album which was you know which is the Survivor Blues one and I said this is great and he said well, what are you doing for your next one I said I wasn't sure and then he said well you know you've, you've been through various stages you know when you were younger you wear your influences and then I told you kind of be yourself he said now you've been around long enough that it's okay to wear your influences on your sleeve a bit again because that's what he did you know with, with mm. that Fiverr Blues album he's paying tribute to all those guys so I thought well okay I'm going to do a complete all out Walter Trout kind of song in terms of, of the style of the music um, and so that's how that one came about You've been very prolific in this day and age. You've done, I think, this is your eleventh studio album, yeah, which is good yeah. going. I mean, you do you, that's a, that's a lot more prolific than a lot of artists. You, you obviously don't suffer from writer's block or anything like that. No, I was just doing an interview, and someone asked me, you know, has it got easier or harder? And I think it's got easier because I used to just wait until the studio was booked and then try and write like the month leading up to the to the studio. My my logic for that was if I haven't written for a year it's going to come out different you know I'm mm -hmm. going to come out with new ideas but of course the trouble with that is writing is like anything um, it's something that you, you you need to constantly work out and practice so if you haven't written a song for a year you've sort of almost got to start from scratch so now I write all year round that's not to say I write every day but uh, you know if, if an idea comes up I tend to I tend not to ignore it. I tend to make the time and, and wherever I am, if I'm on the road or if I'm at home watching something that I don't want to miss, I tend to just, if the idea is there, go and put it down because you don't know when it's going to come back. first 
kind of fell in love with, I think. I, I'm guessing you loved and were influenced by your father's record collection because he, he was in the Red Eye Band, wasn't he? Until was, yeah. Quite a few uh, years, yeah. only a few years ago. Yeah, and um, yeah, I was influenced. I mean, that was always, always the stuff at home. Um, not so much, there wasn't a lot of, I mean, the old blues, but it was there was a lot of Rory Gallagher and, and Clapton and, and Hendrix and, and a lot of Bob Dylan and, and, and Springsteen. But then I, I did what everyone does. You know, I looked back at, you know, who wrote some of those, you know, you listen to, to Hendrix do Killing Floor and mm. find out it was a Howlin' mm. Wolf song. And, and I'd go back and I went back a lot further with it. Um, it's just, you know, which is the fun of it. I've always loved that kind of um, exploration in music, you know, and, and, and one path leads to another and then you discover something else you love. With it. That, that fascinates me. A huge album for me was, was From the Cradle, Eric Clapton's From the Cradle, because he was doing all those, I wasn't aware at the time that's what it was, but he was he was interpreting all those old blues guys and in and then in turn, I went back and discovered every single one of those from that album. So to me, that the album's like an encyclopedia. I mean, it's just, it's stunning, and I don't really think that there's ever been um, kind of any 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 more impassioned guitar playing put on put on record than the way he plays on that. He means every single note on that album. You know, I know some people love him or hate him. I think that did a great service to the blues. <laughs> 